Welcome to Design Your Life with Sandy. I am your host, Sandy Yang. I am a brain rewiring certified coach and human design expert. In this podcast, we talk about becoming the most kick ass, unstoppable version of yourself, building a life of alignment and flow that you deserve, and taking a holistic approach to health and wellness. Don't forget to connect with me on Instagram at sandyyang.hd. Welcome back to the show, episode 21. Now we're in the 20s, and we're keeping it going. I have some news. I literally just a few days ago got attuned to level 2 of a high 7D energy healing. This is the energy that I will be practicing when I work with clients. So energy healing is a big part of what has been really helpful for my evolution. So I'm really excited to be facilitating this kind of healing for others. So that's what level two allows you to do. You can not only practice on yourself, which is level one, you can do it for other people, whether that is one-on-one or groups of people. So I'm excited to bring that into the world. And in today's podcast episode, we are going to cover the basics of the chakra system, you know, the seven chakras. A lot of us here probably are already really familiar and this is going to feel a little basic, but a lot of us kind of know what it is, but not really. And if you were to get energy healing, you would kind of want to know about it, you know? Maybe you, you're different from me, but I like to know what's being done. And it goes beyond the chakra system, but it's just like a big part of energy healing. So we're going to talk about each of the seven chakras, what they are about, how to keep them healthy and in balance. And sort of like just some of the symptoms to watch out for when they are not in balance. I think it's super valuable to have this knowledge. So when you do get an energy healing session, you can have more of a productive conversation with the healer. I know for my first session, I had no idea what a chakra even was. And she kept having to explain what it was to me. And because I had so little knowledge, I was just trying to wrap my brain around what she was explaining. Whereas if I had the knowledge I have now, I would, you know, ask more in-depth questions and get more out of the session. Of course, you don't have to memorize anything. It's just like good to like know a tiny bit. And um, today is actually your lucky day because to receive my certification officially, I need to provide complimentary sessions to other people, whether that is virtual or in person. So there are several spots available and they will not last long. So if you, after listening to this episode, want to receive a complimentary session, reach out to me ASAP to snag one of those free sessions. They won't last long, so act on it right now. Without further ado, let's talk about some chakras. So you actually have more than seven chakras. You have chakras like all over your body. You have chakras in your hands. So when people talk about the seven main chakras is a more high level view of the chakra system. Chakras were first mentioned in the Vedas ancient Hindu texts, and since then it has been recognized in many different cultures that we have life force energy or prana moving inside us, providing like energy to different parts of our body, mind, and spirit. The Sanskrit word chakra means will or disk. So chakras are energy wills or Think of them as energy centers in the body that run from the base of the spine up to the crown of the head. 
So just think of them as centers of the body that act as channels for energy to flow throughout our bodies so we can maintain balance. As we talked about earlier, there are seven main energy centers. These are the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Every one of them can potentially be out of balance in a number of ways. So sometimes they can just be really blocked, kind of like constipated, like it feels like it's stuck, it's not moving. It can also be too open. It can even be bended into the wrong shapes and sizes. So each chakra is related to a different color and corresponds to a physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual state. So when you see someone who is like super healthy, vibrant, and balanced, they most likely have their chakras balanced individually, and all of them will also be in balance with each other. So if you have your root that is off balance and that is located at the base of the spine and is like really foundation for all the other upper chakras to thrive. So if your root is off balance, that could lead to, you know, your sacral or solar plexus being off balance too. So they work with each other. They're a team. And when one of the chakra is out of balance, this could manifest physiologically as a health issue related to that chakra's corresponding body part, which is why it's so important to keep our chakras balanced, right? The opposite is also true. A physiological ailment could cause the corresponding chakra to become out of balance. So, you know, it goes both ways. Obviously, what this means is, you know, what we think, act, and do, how we live our life can affect the well-being of our chakra system and vice versa. For example, if someone never speaks their truth, this might lead to them experiencing problems with their thyroid or if someone lacks self-confidence or autonomy they might experience a lot of digestive issues and we'll talk more about this in a little bit when our chakras are in balance our energy will feel flowy will feel free like you know it's like everything is in flow and we can almost like reach a more optimal state of physical emotional and spiritual health because we have exactly the right amount of energy going to each part of our body mind and spirit here are some ways that you can support your chakras so energy healing obviously this is going to be really powerful you don't really have to know which one is out of balance. Your energy healer will be able to tell and put everything into balance. What is cool is that they can also receive information intuitively when they are doing that. And they will be able to tell you why it was off balance in the first place and how do we avoid that from happening again. Lifestyle things like your mindfulness practice, your diet, your movement play a big part too. So how you eat is going to obviously affect your body and the chakras. Um, meditation and yoga are going to be really helpful. If you Google like yoga for your solar plexus chakra, you will find yoga that strengthens your solar plexus chakra and okay so that's pretty straightforward you can use crystals bring in certain colors to your life each chakra is associated with a different color but like also be mindful you okay let's say your solar plexus chakra is out of balance and you're really struggling with self-esteem lower confidence and you know the root cause is because you have shitty boundaries with your coworkers. You're afraid to say no every time they ask something from you. 
The solar plexus chakra is associated with the color yellow. Painting your house yellow, wearing yellow underwear, eating all the pineapple are not going to solve your problem completely, right? Doing those things won't help you bypass having to set your boundaries and honor them. So I just thought I would emphasize that. Don't bypass the root cause. Let's actually get into talking about the chakras because in order to know how to balance your chakras, it's important to understand what each chakra means. An energy healer can tell you which of your chakras is out of balance, but you might be able to guess it yourself just by understanding what each chakra is associated with. So let's dive in. So the first chakra is your root chakra, which is located at the base of your spine. The root chakra is related to the color red, and this is all about your adrenals, your skin, your large intestine, hips, your legs, your feet, and your elimination system. So, you know, things in that area, your lower body. The root chakra is all about a sense of grounding, you know, stability, security. This chakra can be related to survival, trust, money, home, nature, earth, or your sense of belonging, you know, like feeling you have foundation. And it is often related to feeling grounded when it comes to your career, your relationships, finances, where you're living. This is often out of balance for people who move often or travel a lot. You know, when people are in that in-between space with their careers, if they're unhappy with their careers, if they feel unstable in their relationship, they feel like they can't really lean on their partners. Um, People who worry about money, you know, just like, am I able to survive? So this is all about being rooted. So earthing can be really good. Grounding in nature is like the best thing in the world. If you cannot make it out in nature, you can get grounding mat, which is really helpful. You can also bring in more of the color red into your clothing, your environment, your diet, if you want. Eating more grounding foods like root veggies like carrots, potatoes, sweet potatoes, that kind of thing. But you know, if you are really unhappy at your job, you can probably like do something about it. And like those lifestyle things that support your root chakras are almost like going to add to the momentum. Let's move on to the second chakra, which is the sacral chakra. It is located in the abdomen and navel area, so your lower abs. The sacral chakra is associated with the color orange. Think of this as the passion chakra. It has so much to do with, you know, the reproductive system, creativity, creativity in terms of like, you know, creating humans or a creative project, sexuality, relationships, emotions, intimacy, sensations pleasure, that kind of thing. So the body parts that are connected to the sacral chakra are the testes, the ovaries, uterus, your lower digestive organs, kidneys, prostate, urinary tract, and lower back. So you know, if your lower back is really hurting, or you're getting a lot of UTIs, It's maybe time to get your sacral chakra into balance. Okay, so yeah, like we mentioned, a lot to do with like intimacy and relationships, right? And desire. So let yourself do things that you are just like passionate about for the sake of pleasure. How can you indulge in more of your senses and feel empowered doing so too. So in working with people, I have realized a lot of people are almost like too adult. 
that they lost touch with their passions and creativity. So it's actually like very constructive to our mental health and you know spiritual health. You know everything is connected. So physical health when we let that inner child out to play. The third chakra is the solar plexus, which is located below the sternum. So like below the breastbone. The solar plexus is associated with the color yellow. In terms of body parts, that it is corresponded to, think the pancreas, your liver, spleen, small intestine, gallbladder, and middle back. The solar plexus is almost like out of balance for everyone who struggles with digestion. This chakra has so much to do with like personal power, self esteem, self empowerment, autonomy, determination, and your sense of purpose. So this is like the power chakra, you know. Personally, this one used to go out of balance for me until like the last year, and I think brain rewiring has helped me tremendously. That I'm seeing a lot of improvement. So, you know, the whole energy healing thing can really be helpful in amplifying and supporting your brain rewiring journey. Let's talk about the heart chakra. So, obviously, this is located in the center of the chest. The heart is associated with the color green, and it is connected to the heart. The thymus, respiration, circulation, your immune system, lungs, upper back, hands, and arms. The heart chakra is related to compassion, kindness, love, balance, and giving. So this is about offering that to others as well as being able to receive. The fifth chakra is the throat chakra. So. Obviously, this is located around your throat. The throat chakra is related to the color blue, and it is connected with the thyroid, your metabolism, your ears, nose, mouth, neck, throat, and teeth. So this one is out of balance for a lot of people who struggle to speak their truth or speak up for themselves. This chakra is related to communication, self-expression, sound, receiving, and creativity. The throat chakra is essentially the self-expression chakra, and this doesn't necessarily have to be verbal. I think it's important to keep that in mind because, in terms of human design, some of us. Have an undefined throat center, while others have a defined throat center. And if you're on defined throat, this doesn't mean you don't speak your truth. It just kind of works differently in your self-expression. Not everyone is meant to do that verbally. A lot of us do that through a product that we create, art, music, that kind of thing. So I just thought I would. Bring that up because the common shadow of the undefined throat is feeling really pressured to speak up and doing so inauthentically. The sixth chakra is the third eye chakra, and people talk about this one all the time. This is located between our eyebrows, related to the color indigo. This chakra has to do with the brain. The pituitary gland, the endocrine system, head, eyes, and face. This is like the intuition chakra. It's all about like spiritual awareness, clairvoyance, vision, imagination, individual consciousness. When this chakra is out of balance, is usually an indication that the person needs to focus on getting in touch with their spirituality. And last but not least, we have the crown chakra, which is the seventh one. So this is located at the top of the head. The crown chakra is related to the color white or violet. 
It has so much to do with the nervous system, the pineal gland, your mind, and like actually your whole body. The crown chakra is related to enlightenment, spirituality, connection, fulfillment, completion, and universal consciousness. If you can only balance one chakra, I would suggest you balance the crown chakra because again, it's related to the whole body. Many people confuse the crown chakra with the third eye. And while they are similar, they are very different. The third eye is really more related to spirituality and intuition. The crown is more about the person's connection to the larger universe, sense of fulfillment within their being and like a greater sense of purpose. So it's like the third eye is more individual based while the crown is more like universal. So now that you understand what each of the chakras mean and how they are important, you can sort of tell which one of yours are out of balance and you can send it some love and rebalance them by making the appropriate adjustments in your life to maintain that balance. So again, energy healing, yoga, and meditation are really powerful. You can actually find binaural beads that support that chakra you're balancing on YouTube. So just search binaural beads for, I don't know, root chakra and you'll find something beautiful. You can incorporate more of the chakra's associated color into your life. And of course, focusing on working through the underlying emotions connected to that chakra. For example, if you never speak your truth or get that thing off your chest that you've been wanting to say, your throat chakra will probably keep going out of balance. I recommend incorporating multiple modalities of chakra balancing for best results. This is also a lot of information. When I first learned about the chakra system, I would get sacral and root mixed up all the time. So take your time understanding this. It will just click in time as you do more of that healing on yourself. And let's also talk about when you do an energy healing session, how do we get the most out of it? So let's say you have decided to book a session, you paid for it. Speaking of money, I actually recommend working with someone who charges at least $150 USD. Like everything is energy, including money. And when you invest more money in the session, you are more energetically invested in the healing and you will be more inclined to show up for the healing. I am sharing from the point of view of a practitioner. So we're looking at the value of the hour, obviously, but we're also looking at all of the time, money, and energetic work the healer has invested to become able to facilitate the healing session. Consider the value of the energy, like a high is operating at the frequency of miracles. And oftentimes, just one single session can be transformative for someone that lasts them a lifetime. I have done energy healing for $80. And I have done energy healing for $700. And which one do you think impacted me more? I can tell you, I don't remember shit from the $80 session. And I remember everything the healer told me at the $700 session. So just food for thought. And I'm not saying it has to be super expensive, but it has to be kind of like a meaningful energetic exchange. And paying a decent amount is also honoring yourself. Okay back to getting the most out of your session. So the first thing is to be open and ready to receive. If you show up to your energy healing session feeling closed off and questioning if this will even work, 
you are already blocking yourself from receiving its full benefits. It is super important to be both mentally and physically ready to receive your healing. Setting intentions and journaling on that or meditating on your intentions can be really helpful. Affirmations like I am open to receive is really powerful as well. And I always ask my clients to say that out loud before we get started. Yeah, and just like never underestimate the power of intention, you know? I think if you are getting energy healing for the first time, it can be nerve-wracking and you can always reach out to the healer to see how the session will be facilitated and that will help you feel more confident going into it. Don't be afraid to communicate. As a practitioner myself, I want my clients to feel good going into the sessions and we are just as invested in your healing as you are. Number two, fully embrace the process. Again, if you come to your session unprepared to embrace the energy healing, you aren't going to benefit fully from it. Like, obviously. If you have any questions or concerns about the session, have an open conversation with the healer beforehand so they can outline everything you can expect. Embracing the process also means releasing any judgment or fear around the energy healing. So make sure to arrive at your session with an open mind. Remember that every session is unique. There is no right or wrong experience. And I used to get hung up on this because I would compare like, oh, that happened to you? How come I didn't feel tingly and cold and hot during my session? And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, that question energy is so draining and it prevents you from receiving all the good things you could be. So... For one of your intentions, it should definitely be to receive exactly what you need for your highest and best at that time. Number three is more about logistics. Don't come in a rush. This might be super obvious, but you're not going to get the most out of your energy healing session if it is rushed. It is important to set aside plenty of time on that day. And make sure you're not booked up with other commitments that will stress you out. Ideally, you would just want to be able to chill for the rest of the day. Just like knowing that you don't have commitments afterwards will help you feel less stressed and more receptive. And obviously, be better able to focus on the energy you are receiving. If you book your energy healing session and other plans pop up right before or after, you might want to reach out to the practitioner and reschedule. Also, a lot of energy healers, including myself, recommend setting aside extra time after the session to rest and integrate. It is important that you allow yourself to fully be present in the experience without being worried about what just happened or what's going to happen next. Number four is again about communication. You want to tell your energy healer about any specific things you would like to work on. Your energy healer can target specific areas or blockages with their intention. But it's best that you communicate anything specific you would like them to focus on. You will most likely get an intention form to fill out before the session, so take that seriously. Some of the things you can ask your healer to focus on are past traumas, illnesses, physical injuries, emotional blocks, even like past life stuff if you want. Just remember, like your healer is here to help you. They don't judge you by any means. And don't be afraid to be completely honest with them. This is your session. I'm sure you want to make the most out of it. And if you want to be supported in a specific way, just make sure that intention is known to them. 
Last but not least, take care of your damn self after your session. So a lot of people underestimate the physical effects that energy healing session can have on the body after your session. It is not uncommon to feel tired. However, some people may feel more energized, so it just depends. Make sure to get more rest, drink plenty of water, and fully integrate the healing you just received. This is another reason why it's important to schedule your healing session on a day where you are not packed with other commitments and to-dos. After your session is over, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend taking some time to rest and allow things to settle instead of rushing into your next task, you know? All right, this is all for this week's episode. It is jam-packed with chakras, energy healing, making the most out of your energy healing session and everything in between. Look, if you haven't tried energy healing, you are missing out big time. Like, it's like a world where there's so much to explore, but you just don't know about it. Um, so hopefully today you learned plenty about it. And feel free to reach out to me to tell me if this was helpful for you, what other information you would like to learn on this topic. Send this episode to a friend who could benefit from it. And if you enjoy this podcast, leave a rating and review. I so appreciate those. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I will talk to you in the next episode.